So here we're going to solve the um, second order uh, linear homogeneous ODE with constant coefficients when uh, b squared minus 4ac equals 0. So we have a repeated root, right? Remember we try x equals e to the rt and we get a r squared plus b r plus c equals 0. And in this case, since b squared minus 4ac equals 0, we only have one root, which is r equals minus b over 2a. Okay, one real root. Okay, because the root is repeated in a uh, quadratic equation. So um, that means we only have one solution, right? We have x1 of t equals uh, e to the rt and uh, we're missing a solution because we need two solutions in order to satisfy um, two initial conditions one on x and one on x dot so that missing solution uh, must not be of this form right x equals e to the rt uh, must be of a different form so how do we find that missing solution? Um, the idea is to uh, find it by a limiting process. So we're going to consider the case when we have two complex conjugate solutions. So we're going to consider what happened when b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. And then we're going to limit that solution as b squared minus 4ac goes to 0. Okay? That's the idea. So when, uh, when we had complex conjugate roots, we had two roots. So we have uh, r1, which we wrote as lambda plus i mu. We had an r2, which we wrote as lambda minus i mu. Right, and then our solution was um, x of t equals e to the uh, lambda t times a cosine mu t plus b times sine mu t. Okay, and we want to take the limit of this solution as mu goes to zero. Right, mu is the uh, square root of 4ac minus b squared, right? So how do we take the limit of this solution as mu goes to 0? Um, well, cosine mu t as mu goes to 0 goes to 1. Sine mu t will go to 0, right? So let me, let me mark that down. Cosine mu t will go to 1. Sine mu t will go to 0 as mu goes to 0. Um, it looks like x of t will be equal to a e to the lambda t, but that's only our single solution. So in order to be able to, to continue to satisfy the two initial conditions as mu goes to 0, b must go to infinity. Okay b times sine mu t must go to some non-zero quantity. So how can we see that? We can only see that if we, instead of using a and b, we replace a and b by the initial conditions. So let's, uh, let's do that. I can use a, another piece of uh, paper to do that. So we have um, the initial conditions, which will be x of 0 equals x naught, some general initial condition, x dot of 0 equals u naught, okay? And then um, we consider our solution, so x of t equals e to the lambda t a cosine mu t plus b sine mu t, right? 
we want to replace A and B by these initial conditions and then take the limit that mu goes to zero. So um, the, we'll need the derivative. So x dot is equal to using the product rule and the chain rule lambda e to the lambda t, the derivative of the first times the second, a cosine mu t plus b sine mu t plus the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second will bring out a mu e to the lambda t and then a minus a sine mu t plus a b cosine mu t. Okay? Then the application of our initial conditions, x of 0 is x naught, and we have a e to the 0 times a times 1 plus b times 0. So that tells us x naught equals a. x dot of 0 is u naught, and that will be uh, lambda times 1 times a. Sine is 0 plus mu times 1 times b. It's mu times b sine again is 0. So that uh, tells us a is uh, x naught. So this is lambda x naught plus mu times b. So therefore we have a we said was x naught. And then we can solve this for b. So b is equal to u naught minus lambda x naught divided by mu. Okay? So we see that as mu goes to 0, b goes to infinity. So x of t for the complex conjugate roots case is equal to e to the lambda t times x naught cosine mu t plus u naught minus lambda x naught over mu times sine mu t. Okay? So that's in general true when the roots are complex conjugates. Now when the roots are repeated real roots, uh, we get the solution as mu goes to zero. So the limit as mu goes to zero of x of t should give us the repeated root case. Lambda doesn't change, e to the lambda t. Cosine mu t goes to one, so we get an x naught. Uh, mu naught minus lambda x naught doesn't change. We're holding the initial conditions fixed. We're holding lambda fixed. We're just sending mu to zero. And then the limit that mu goes to zero of sine mu t over mu, sine mu t when the argument is small is well approximated by mu t. And mu t divided by mu gives us t. Okay? And that will be the solution of the uh, differential equation and the initial conditions when um, uh, mu is zero or b squared minus 4ac equals zero. So if you don't, you can remember this formula or not. So uh, if you don't remember this formula, then the important point is that we have x equals a constant times e to the lambda t plus another constant times t times e to the lambda t. So we have our first solution is our e to the lambda t. Our second solution is t times e to the lambda t. Okay? And lambda is the root Lambda is the repeated root of the characteristic equation.
Okay, that's our result. And then we can form a linear superposition of x1 and x2. So we can try uh, a simple example, right? We can uh, solve uh, x double dot plus 2x dot plus x equals 0 with x of 0 equals 1, x dot of 0 equals 0, okay? We can try x equals e to the rt. We get r squared plus 2r plus 1 equals 0. And we see that this is just r plus 1 squared equals 0, a repeated root r equals minus 1. So we know we have one solution, e to the minus rt. Our second solution is t times e to the minus rt minus r t, uh, sorry, our first solution is e to the minus t, r equals minus 1. Our second solution is t times e to the minus t. So our solution we write as e to the minus t times c1 plus c2 times t. Okay, those are our two linearly independent solutions. And now we simply satisfy the initial condition, so we need x dot, which is the derivative of the first, times the second, plus the first, times the derivative of the second. Okay? x of 0 is 1, so x of 0 is 1, that's equal to c1. x dot of 0 is 0. That's equal to 1 times c1 minus 1 times c1 minus c1 plus 1 times c2 plus c2, which tells us c2 equals c1 and c1 equals 1. Okay, so now we've solved uh, the differential equation and the initial conditions. And our final solution is x of t equals e to the minus t 1 plus t. Okay? That's how you solve repeated roots.